The original purpose of karate was self-defense. Unfortunately, many modern styles focus on self-perfection rather than self-protection, meaning it became more about character development and competition rather than actually using the moves in real life. But one style has remained true to its roots. In fact, this style was so effective that the founder had to shut down his dojo and vow to never teach again after one of his students killed a man. And it took over a decade until he actually started teaching again. And in today's video, you're gonna hear three reasons why I believe this style is the very best for self-defense. Keep watching. You gotta understand that every style can be taught so that it fits for self-defense. But on the other hand, this style can also be taught so that it doesn't fit for self-defense. Because it's not what you teach, it's how you teach it. And sometimes karate can be like pushing a square peg through a round hole. It doesn't really work unless you adjust it or modify it. But this style is the one that requires least modification because it is the closest to its original form. And the first reason is because of its fighting stance. You see, this style utilizes an open-handed fighting stance, which is kind of signaling that, hey, I don't want to fight. In a street fight, obviously, you would be standing with your fists closed, ready to strike back. But self-defense is different. It is non-consensual. So you want to signal to the attacker that you don't want any trouble. And this is actually the standard way of standing in a ready position in this particular style. It is practically made for self-defense. Additionally, this stance allows you to both grab and use your fingers for nasty, dirty strikes and techniques that are not allowed in karate as a sport or in many other modern styles of karate. And obviously, that is perfect for self-defense. Because you gotta understand that when somebody attacks you, the first stage of self-defense is usually verbal de-escalation, using your body language to signal that you don't want any trouble. And that's why it's so smart to have an open-handed defensive posture as a fence to bridge that aggressive gap and kind of calm down your attacker. Because body language is 90% of communication. Which brings me to the second reason, and that's because it really sucks for competing. You will never see an Olympic level athlete using this style in a competition because it's not flashy and fancy. The movements that this style use are simple, practical, and straightforward. They don't have a lot of high kicks or deep stances. You know, stuff that actually requires some warming up and some flexibility because you don't have time for that on the street. Which is why it doesn't look as exciting as many other styles, and therefore it doesn't score as well in tournaments. And if you do see somebody using this style at a tournament, they usually adapt it. They change the moves or the rhythm a little bit just to make it suit better in the tournament format. However, it does work pretty well in full contact competition, as long as you remove some of the more dangerous aspects of the style. Because remember, it was used for self-defense where there are no rules other than survival, which means that there's a lot of dangerous and perhaps even deadly techniques that this style incorporates. And most of them don't even work with gloves on because they utilize each part of the hand and the body in general as a deadly weapon. The third reason has to do with pain. Because let's say you actually get attacked and somebody's starting to beat you up. Well then, if you're not used to deal with pain, you're gonna get paralyzed. You get into that fight or flight shock state and you don't want that. And that's why this style focuses so much on physical conditioning. Just check out this clip that I shot with the great grandson of the founder of the style in Okinawa. Could you maybe demonstrate uh, one uh, conditioning exercise for the arms and one for the legs? Okay. Okay? I Let's start with the arms. What is the secret to being this well conditioned? Keep practicing. Keep, keep practicing. Keep, keep, keep practice. Keep. Imagine doing that kind of physical conditioning on a daily basis. It might not be the best thing for your health, but for self-defense, 
That's perfect. Because you won't always have time to block every attack that comes your way. You can't always avoid getting hit. It's inevitable that you will get hit at some point and you must not flinch. You need to be able to take some damage and dish it out as well. Because in nine times out of 10, the reason many people lose a self-defense situation is because of their mentality. They don't have that all in balls to the walls approach because they're so afraid of getting hurt themselves. Imagine if you didn't have that fear, if you could just go all in to defend yourself and your loved ones. That's a huge advantage, not just physically, but also mentally. And before I reveal the style, I wanna give you a fourth bonus. If you ever watch clips of this style, you will notice that they hardly ever stack their hands by the hip. They don't have this chambered position that so many modern karate styles use all the time. And that's because the passive hand is always held at the front, sometimes pulled back in a closed position, but almost never back at the hip where it's essentially useless because you can't defend yourself from that exposed and open position. And this is one of the easiest ways to spot this style because while all the other styles have the classic karate punches, this style does not. And the name of the style is Uechi Ryu because Uechi was actually the name of the founder. It's a common name in Okinawa. Although the man himself, Kambun Uechi, went to China and studied this style before he brought it back to Okinawa and then later spread it to the rest of the world through many of his American students. Because the American military bases were really close to the Uechi Ryu Dojo, and that's why it's particularly spread in the US. Now let me end this video with a story about Uechi Ryu. You see, Okinawa, is still one of the poorest prefectures in Japan. And back in the days, it was even worse, especially after America came and bombed it to pieces. So in order to survive, a lot of karate experts had to start showing their skills in public and get donations from people watching the show. This is what you would see in a lot of old kung fu movies, right? But the problem with the Uechiryu is that it originally only consisted of three basic kata. So there was not a lot of material to show people in these demos. And for this reason, they actually created a bunch more katas that still exist to this day as part of the Uechiryu system. But a lot of people don't know that the reason they were actually created was essentially to make money and survive back in the days. And as a result, the art got more and more popular and eventually spread around the world, so much so that we can still enjoy it to this day. And if you enjoyed learning about this, check out some of my other videos to learn even more about the original art and science of old school karate from Okinawa. Thank you so much for watching. Train hard, good luck, and have fun.